uh, welcome to our eighth and last boot camp for now this uh, team boot camp um, so um, yesterday we were working on the building tidy tools right and we ended up making a package and so I'll just show you uh, um, one that I actually made myself um, uh, I didn't call it full factors uh, I call it test matrix because I actually needed to test something else yesterday. Uh, but this uh, this package has my fbind function um, that we worked on yesterday uh, with examples and stuff. So I use this small package to actually develop um, uh, an update to BioCVS yesterday. Um, 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 so like if you actually look at this, you'll some of these commit messages, I was kind of, I was getting a bit frustrated with like, uh, with what I was testing. And so like, uh, I think I have a, yeah, I'm falling asleep type of commit. <laughs> right, message. Uh, anyway, um, so we made our package um, and that was part of uh, the whole game chapter on the um, um, art, um, making our packages chapter um, from, um, sorry, the, uh, our chapters, at our packages book, the second chapter called the whole game. Um, so just to recap a little bit, right? Making this package involve using the use these function with create underscore package, right? Um, uh, like a lot of us did it on our desktop yesterday. Then we use a use R function um, to actually create the R script for our function in this uh, in this uh, uh, in our desired location, and then we just copied a specific function that we had some uh, code for already, right? And this was a, the core part of our function. Um, um, once we had our little function, we started using DevTools load all, which is command shift D on Mac or control shift D on Windows to load all the code um, and start playing with it um, on our session. Um, then uh, from the magic wand, there is the insert raw oxygen skeleton menu that we use to start the documentation. And then to actually document it, we use DevTools document, which is com uh, command or control shift uh, DS in David. Um, and so that way we could then like preview the help page with like question mark at fine. Um, once we're happy with that, then we start checking our package using um, control shift E. Um, E as in um, um, elephant. Um, 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 and, uh, uh, and we continued this until we got it to a point where our package was not having any errors. One of the first things is like maybe we had to edit our description to make, uh, to provide our name and stuff, to write an actual title and description and to specify a license. Um, so we use artistic dash 2.0. That's a license that is used a lot by Bioconductor packages. Um, and so once we have that, we can then uh, uh, build and restart using uh, uh, command or control shift and B as in boy. Um, so that installs the package and restarts it. Um, uh, and then at that point, like, if we had any links on our FBI function, then those links would work when we looked at the help page for it, right? Um, okay. So those are like, you know, the main tools that we'll use for, um, uh, for making our packages. Um, now that is for making a function um, and, and testing and making the documentation. Uh, but like uh, a big component of making our packages is unit testing. And, um, and you'll notice on my packages, like um, I have a, uh, different degrees of unit testing. Some of my R packages are work, have a lot of unit tests, 
some of them I um, don't really have unit tests. They are basically tested because of the examples. And so what are unit tests or what, why we need them? Um, so <clears throat> uh, uh, the way that they teach it on this workshop is actually different from, um, I find it interesting, is different from what I've done in, in, in elsewhere. Elsewhere they might teach you like why you should be uh, having unit tests. Um, 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 but then here they're gonna motivate having tests as a part of package development or um, function development. And so the example that we're gonna work with to, to visualize this, to this strategy of working with unit tests is, um, is gonna involve a little function called add underscore column. We're gonna have a, a, a given data frame. We're gonna give it a name of the column we want, the value we want it, and in what location of our data frame we want it. So if we want it at the beginning, that would be probably where equals one. If we want it like, let's say after the second column, then we, that would be where equals two type of thing. Um, uh, so let's, you know, Let's, uh, uh, let's start with that. So the idea of this square argument is that, let's say we have a data frame that has columns X, Y, and Z. Uh, here it has three different values. If we specify where, that means that we want it to be the first column. So uh, to the left side of the first uh, column that we have, we specify two, that will be in, in between X and Y, three between Y and Z. And then if we specify a number greater than the last column that we have, which is the third one, Z, then now we want, then we want it at the end. That will be the, the behavior that we want for our query function, uh, argument in our function. Um, and so <clears throat> um, this actually involves two logical steps, uh, this um, add call. One of them is um, inserting into um, a data frame. And so we can make a little uh, function called insert underscore into. Um, um, and so the idea here is like if we have two data frames, data frame one and data frame two, right? Um, uh, if we're inserting, uh, um, uh, into data frame one, we're inserting data frame two at where is equals one, that will mean that we're going to insert this data frame to, to the left side of the column A of data frame one, and the end result will be like X, Y, and then A, B, and C. If we say like insert to uh, into data frame one or data frame two with where is equal equals two, where equals two here is like in between the columns A and B for data frame one, and so the end result is A, X, Y, B, and C. Um, um, so this function insert two is going to have to take like two data frames, data frame one, data frame two. Um, they're going to have to have the same dimensions, so the same number of rows. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then depending on the core argument, that's where we're going to paste them. That's where we're going to combine them. Right. So, <clears throat> um, so, uh, let, you know, here they give us a little skeleton that we can use to start making this function um, insert into. So they're giving us an X and a Y argument instead of DF1 and DF2 and a where argument. Um, and so we're going to have a set of different uh, use cases. One of them is when we're talking about the very first column of X. Another one where we're talking about a, we gave it a where value that is greater than the number of columns that we have on X. And then the other one is like in between, right? Um, 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 and so we wanna start making this function, right? And so here potentially we need to replace this triple, I mean, this, this is not really the ellipsis argument from R, this is just like, um, like um, a, a didactic, like uh, fill me out or complete me, right? Um, and so we want to use like different C by calls there. Uh, um, so what could that look, right? So one potential version of this function is uh, 
uh, if we're talking about the very, um, we want to uh, append um, um, where equals one, we want to combine. So actually they reverse X and Y here from what I was saying in, uh, in the, uh, over here in this syntax. Um, um, yeah, they reversed it. So we're, um, I guess the syntax here for insert to into is like reinserting X into Y. Uh, so we, if we're inserting X into Y with where equals one, we want x to be on the left side. So we'll just use c bind of x, then, com then comma y. Um, um, if we specified, uh, this looks wrong to me, right? Like, now they're saying like, if square is greater than, than the number of columns of x, then we want y first and then x. Um, I think there's some errors here in the syntax. Um, um, well, maybe that's because this is the first attempt. <laughs> um, um, okay. Um, uh, then the other one would be like, okay, let's see by x, the first few columns of x, then y, then the last columns of x, the remaining columns of x, right? Um, but that is actually, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was actually incorrect. Um, the correct, uh, you can see here that they, um, X and Y were incorrect, where equals X equal, where, where eh, when where equals one, we actually wanted Y first than X. Then if we're talking about more than the columns of X, then we got one at the end, right? So we want X first and Y. Uh, so the syntax here was wrong, um, but then also like this code over here will work in a lot of scenarios, um, uh, but maybe uh, we might have uh, some values of where where this wouldn't work. So uh, this like um, um, this is a more specific syntax. Um, where we're going to use the power of the negative um, um, way of um, the negative in, uh, index to access um, a column or a table. Um, so this code is a bit more robust, even though both of them work. Um, why? Because uh, um, I mean, we. I mean, we can make some. We can find an edge case where the previous code couldn't work. Um, I don't know it. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, I know there is one. I think. Um, um, oh yeah. So how do you? How did this person even write that code? Right. So the first thing they did was you know create some example inputs. Um, so the F1 and the F2. Once they have the two inputs, then they would like edit their function insert into and just test it with different cases of so where equals one, where is equals two, where is equals three, et cetera. And so after every time they made an update to insert into to see if it actually worked, then they ran the, the, the um, they loaded the package again, ran it and saw if it was generating the expected output that they had in their minds. Um, um, so, if you're going to be doing this quite a bit, at some point, this uh, workflow of reloading everything, then running command enter, and, and visually checking the output can be error prone because maybe you're forgetting to, um, uh, maybe you forgot to execute one of the lines, things like that. And then also you have to look at all the output, right? And so this might be a simple case, but you might have like more complicated cases where the output is like challenging to look at. Um, so <clears throat> that's why they came up with this new workflow to make it faster to develop packages and stuff. Um, and so, uh, um, uh, 
we can load all, et cetera, instead of, um, um, instead of command enter, instead of sourcing. Um, but then uh, for the outputs, for looking at the outputs, that's where we can start to use tests. And so um, DevTools test underscore file is a way of making a little test. So let's start, uh, this is now uh, one of the chapters of the R packages book um, on testing. So first we need to, you know, to actually try this out, we need to create a package, right? So let's create a package called um, had column. Um, I think, and it's, the name for this is like Hadley, and then column is for like, because um, this is an, an example where we're um, inserting um, columns and stuff. So, um, you know, let's, we're gonna, you know, just open any given R studio window you have. Um, and so I'm gonna copy this stuff. Um, I'm create my package, hat column. Um, oh, actually, my um, mistake my art profile yesterday. Um, which I fixed on my Mac computer, but not on my PC. So let me open that again, sorry. Mm. All right. Cool. Um, so I fixed my R profile. Um, and so um, let's just create it. My had call package, right? Uh, if I look at the description file for it, um, we can see that it's already using like my um, the information I provided about myself in the uh, in um, um, in my R profile. Sorry, I closed Slack on my other computer. Um, okay, I'll just change the license here because I know that uh, uh, R command check will complain if I don't change this later. And then as a title here, I'll uh, I'll say like. Um, Adding columns. Right. Um, right, like um, our package doesn't have any functions right now, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna um, make the function for insert into. So for that, I want to use use r insert into. Um, uh, use this is already loaded in, uh, into um, for me because I edited my R profile. Um, I, so using use R insert into created under the R directory then insert underscore into the R uh, file. Um, and so um, at this point, right? Uh, we already have a, a, a working function, so I'm going to copy that code and paste it. Right? Um, uh, let me close Slack. Right. Um, I actually uh, automatically formatted it by like pressing Control A to select all the code, then Control Shift A, which is equivalent of the magic wand reformat code button on our studio. Um, so that reformatted the code. Uh, um, and I have some defaults already for saying that I would like to have four spaces for indentation. 
And I use that because that's the default that they ask for in Biconductor packages. Um, all right. So I have my little function over here, right? Um, um, at this point, the next thing is to um, insert the Roxygen documentation, right? Because then that way we can start testing. Um, um, and so I'll add a, you know, a couple of examples. So let me um, uh, let me copy the, the example code that we have here. BF1 and BF2. Um, and I'll also copy the, the example applications of it. Um, um, actually, because I copy pasted this insert into, um, uh, our studio doesn't automatically add the pound uh, apostrophe at the beginning of the line. And it, it, I need to add it to lines 15 and 16. So what I'll do is I'll um, press the Alt key on my keyboard. Then while keeping the Alt key pressed, I'll drag my mouse up. That way I get more than one cursor and so I can type in more than one line at the same time and add the pound sign syntax, right? Um, so at this point, like I could like press uh, Control Shift D, uh, sorry, um, I didn't want to document it. Uh, Control Shift L um, to load all um, and I can try it out, right? Uh, with like, uh, with Control Enter. Um, so that's one way of doing things, but we're, we're going to learn the um, test-oriented way of doing, um, uh, of working with, uh, with packages. Um, so <clears throat> the idea here is like immediately after you create your function, insert into with use R, the next thing you could do is to actually use the use underscore test function. Um, um, and so if I do that, uh, if I ran, if I run use underscore test while having insert into dot R selected, it automatically detects the file name that I'm working with. And it will use that to create a set of directories and files for us. So it creates the test directory, and inside of it, it creates a test that directory. Inside of tests, it creates a little script called test that.r. And then inside of tests, test that, it creates a file called test dash, and then the file name that I'm of, of um, the name of the file I was currently working on, which is insert underscore into. And then it adds the .r extension. And then it opens it up on my RStudio window. And this test on this uh, test dash insert underscore into .r file has an example test. Um, and so um, let's look a little bit about you know what a, what everything else was. So if I go under the test directory in the bottom right side and open test that .r, what is this little script doing? So it's saying like um, um, it wants to load the test that directory, uh, sorry, package. It wants to load the package that we're currently working on, which the name of it was had call. Um, and then it's going to run uh, the function test underscore check for the whole package had call. Um, and so test that and all of this will recognize all the different tests that live um, We'll run all the R scripts that we have under um, the name of our package, which in this case is had call, inside the test directory, inside the test that directory. Uh, and so we'll recognize all, it will like search for all the .r files and then run all the code that exists there. Um, and so in particular, this test here is saying like, uh, we want to test the concept of whether the multiplication works uh, and so for that, we're going to use a function called test underscore that. We give it a little like uh, string here that will be useful for us in the future to have an idea of like, what are we working on, comma, and then it has this kind of weird syntax, which is 
you open a curly uh, curly brackets, um, almost like if it was a function, but you could actually have multiple tests here. So I'm gonna you know um, paste the. I'm using uh, sorry, I did a couple things. Um, let me backtrack. So on, on the second line, uh, when I was on the second line, I press Control Shift A to automatically uh, um, reformat the code. So it, it indents it to four spaces for me. And so let me add another test here, right? Two times three, that should be six. So this, the syntax here is a little bit weird because there's, for example, there's no comma right after, after that first line. Um, and so if I run all of that code, right? Um, if all the tests were successful, like it just gives us nothing. But let's say I, you know, I had an incorrect test of like two times three, it should be, uh, I said like it's, the answer should be seven. Uh, test that will give us an error. And it will be like, oops, there was an error because in, there was an error under the context of multiplication works, which was the, the string that I provided over here. Uh, and then it says like, oh, actually like two times three is not equal to seven. So two times three, the left side of this expect equal is not equal to the right side, which was seven. And then, then it provides a little bit more information. It says like six minus seven is not equal, um, you know, uh, is actually equal to minus one. So it should be equal to zero. Um, and so you want to provide here, uh, uh, you want to use um, descriptions here that will be useful for you in the future. If you have a lot of tests and one of them fails and you just want to find which one was it that failed, right? So let me save that for now. That's a, like we have a test that doesn't work right now. Um, and so, <clears throat> Um, I need a new voice. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, what we did yesterday was like we modified the code, we, we reloaded the code, the code using load underscore all, and then we explored the call the eh, we explored the code, the output of it, and how it worked in the console. And what we're going to add now to this cycle is after reloading the call the code, after reloading the code, we're gonna test it all uh, using automated tests instead of exploring it manually. And so the way we can run all the automatic tests is again with uh, the, the syntax of command or control plus shift plus a letter. And in this case, the letter is T for testing. And so that you know is a bit hard to press with a single hand. Um, and I just ran it and it ran really fast because my tests are short. And it says like, okay, I'm loading the package had column. I'm testing the package had column. And it gives a little summary. It says like, okay, um, um, under the file insert into, because I might have multiple test files, I have one okay test and one F. What is F? That's one failure. Um, um, and so then that's like the summary version of it. Then it actually provides more, more details. And it says like, add the file test dash insert into the R line number three. There was a failure when we were testing the concept of multiplication works, which is what I specified as my string here as a fir first argument to test that. And then it provides the same type of output of like two times three is not equal to seven, which is like what I was testing um, here in line three, right? And then it says like, okay, the full summary of everything is that we have one test that is okay, one that failed. Uh, we have zero of them that produce warnings and we didn't skip any tests. Um, so like, um, um, <clears throat> Let me just make another test, use test, and, and like, uh, like another testing file. So it'll be like, uh, um, uh, 
by name. Mm. So those will be like you know, I'm just adding a very simple task here. I'm saying like uh, Um, selecting all, automatically uh, reformatting with Control Shift A, um, and so I'm going to run Control Shift T to run all the tests. Um, and so now we get, uh, we can see that it says, uh, for as in our summary, it says like under the in insert into file, we have one OK test, one failure. On there's a file called my underscore name, we have one that is um, working. And so this is just an example of how the output will, will look once you have more and more tests. Um, um, so the idea here is like, okay, I have a little mistake here um, uh, because one of my tests is failing. So you might have to explore in more detail why that test is failing. Uh, in this particular case, we already know that solution because I had uh, the wrong test. So I'll fix the test itself. Um, and then Command Shift, uh, Control Shift T or Command Shift T, depending on the computer system, uh, will run the tests again. And now I get all green, only tests, only tests are all okay. Right. Um, um, so, uh, what this is doing really is like we're using load all um, and that that way we're like testing all the all, all the sorry load all is for like loading all the call all all the code and test um, itself or uh, command shift T that runs the test for all the whole package in itself if I go back to insert into I'm just gonna press Control T. Mm, that didn't work. Mm. All right, let me run this manually. Um. Let's run that tools um, test file. All right. um, so the idea here was a dev tools test file just uh, automatically recognizes what file we are, which is the insert into .r. Automatically recognizes that the test file related to this is the test dash insert underscore into .r and then just runs the test for this, right? And so this is a very helpful function in, uh, for scenarios where you have a lot of tests and like they all take a while to run and you just wanna test, um, um, you just wanna run the test specific to the function that you're working on uh, quickly. Um, cool. Um, why do we reload a co code when you can just run the automatic tests? Um, um, well, actually, like, I mean, you can just do it by itself, right? You don't actually need uh, to reload a code. Uh, if you just want to reload a code here, you will also want to interact with these four things. Um, um, and so, <clears throat> uh, you, you might have actually make small functions that help you automate your tests, right? So um, here, for example, I have like insert into, and I'm checking that query equals one, two, and three. So I'm running the same code three times. I had a copy pasted it, right? Um, and like, we always know that uh, copy pasting is error prone. So one way to do all of that quickly is to have a little function. Um, add position here, or we, we give it an I, 
and it just runs insert into df1 um, to and then where it goes one right and so <clears throat> if i copy what i have here i'm going to copy it into my test for insert into um, um, so i need to delete those lines uh, so i can just select the commented lines and then press Control shift c which uncomments the lines um, um, and so that deletes automatically for for us the pound sign and the apostrophe um, so i'm going to copy this code acquisition and this um, um, into my window and I'll copy the tests inside here. Um, I'll automatically reformat and then we'll be, I'll change the text here to insert to and check that it works. So for checking that it works, I'm gonna press Control Shift T. Um, I'm just gonna run all the tests. And I see that it returned all green. Right? So all the tests here were successful. Um, and so <clears throat> here, like we had to think about what was our input um, data, DF1, DF2. Um, and then this, you know, we made a very small data frame um, such that we can like come up with the answers ourselves of how like things should look like. Right. Um, so we know that like uh, if we're inserting position one, we should the result should be X, Y, then A, B, and C. Position two then is going to be like A, then X, Y, then B, and C, etc. Right. Um, and so this small helper function here, add underscore plus or position, um, is helping us. Uh, not have to like do the insert into and paste it at like all the three different ways, right? Um, so um, you could argue that like this was a very short example and maybe you, we didn't need to do that little function, right? Um, um, but all of this, all of this code here is, um, um, can be useful in more complicated scenarios, all these concepts. Um, cool. So, um, and so the idea here is like, if there is a problem, it will be easy for us to try to solve this, right? Because we, you know, we can see the pattern of the answers and stuff like that. Um, um, and so, um, uh, you can, we can, Actually, the code that I wrote about DF1, DF2, and that position, all of that can actually go inside the curly braces. Um, um, so it could all be part of the same, um, oops. Uh, it can all be part of the same um, label here, insert into works, which they, uh, here they have it as can add column at any position. Which is probably a better, <laughs> a better description than the one I wrote. Um, and you might want to do this because, like, let's say the line, line uh, number three is failing or something. Um, like, maybe I'm not as initializing my data correctly, right. and then like the error will tell us like, oh, here you're doing something wrong, right? Um, so let's just add a comma, I think, just to break it. Um, and so uh, I got an error that failed, and it's telling me it's failing on in the insert into works section, right? So it provides me a, a bit more specific information of what where it's failing. I'm gonna delete that comma, run the test again, um, and now it works completely. And because I like their text more than mine. I'll use theirs. Right. Right. Um, 
So this involves like a lot, a ton of little files, right? And there's a couple of conventions here. So we're gonna have one main test file um, per every file that we have, per every like .r file that we have in our R directory. Um, um, then we can have a, inside of that file, we can have multiple collections of tests, right? Um, so here, for example, there's four tests grouped together, then two over here, one by itself, two more over here. Um, each of the tests themselves themselves is just going to um, um, uh, check one thing at a time. So here's like, uh, for example, we expect the names to be of the columns, we expect the names of the columns to be um, a, B, X, Y, and C, for example, of the result of our, um, of our resulting data frame. We don't actually care about the values, one, three, two, four, and five, et cetera, um, in that particular test that we're doing. Um, um, and so there's several like expect functions, right? So one way to check all of them is to use like, for example, apropos, expect underscore um, and so apropos here is gonna uh, show us all the functions that have it's kind of like do, doing like a, a grep on like all the functions that we have access to right now and it's telling this telling us the full list here and so there's a ton of them um, and we might have specific situations where we want to use them I typically use a lot the, um, the expect equal. Uh, I also use the expect error function. Um, and sometimes I use the expect warning um, um, if I want to check specific warnings. Um, something that is also useful, like if you're using numbers that might be very similar in nature, but like maybe numerically speaking, um, they might be off by like very small decimals. At that point, you might want to use a function expect equivalent, um, because like at that point, you could say like zero point zero zero one is basically the same as like zero zero. Um, um, zero 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 one, right? Um, although technically they're not equal, right? But like if you have a if you have a tolerance of let's say um, zero point uh, three, uh, sorry, zero point and then uh, three zeros one, they would work. And that's kind of equivalent as doing like absolute of one minus the other, and then saying, is that smaller than my tolerance level, right? Um, and in this case, it's true, right? Um, so um, this can be useful, especially if you're like, Feeding models, for example, um, uh, or doing anything that involves like uh, um, some complex math, um, some matrix algebra, for example, you might end up with like numbers that are almost the same, but like not necessarily identical. And that's because uh, the way like some of these uh, multiplications and stuff is done changes a little bit by operating systems. So you won't get exactly the same numbers, numeric numbers in your computer. Um, all right, so this involves a lot of shortcuts, right? Uh, um, so command T actually didn't work for me. Oh, that's maybe because I need an add-in. Um, command R. Um, um, uh, but command shift T did work for me for package development and stuff like that. Um, so the idea now is for you to practice this, but like um, uh, I see that we're near near the hour, so let's take a let's take a ten minute break and we'll come back. Um, uh, so I'll see you. Let's take a fifteen minute break. I'll see you at uh, four ten. Uh, I'll stay around in case you have any questions though, and I'll pause the recording. Right. 
So actually, um, I, um, I spent a bit of time. I understand this slide better now, this, the setup keyboard shortcuts one. And that's because if you go to tools, add-ins, uh, then there's browse add-ins. Then here you can click keyboard shortcuts and you can actually set some keyboard shortcuts. And so some of the ones that they're recommending that we set that are not set by default are run a test file. So that is um, command T on Mac or control T. That's the one they recommend control T on Windows. Report test uh, coverage for um, for a file that's control R. For a full package is control shift R or shift command R. Um, um, so those are some of the uh, keyboard shortcuts that they're recommending we, we uh, specify. Um, and so after specifying them, for example, if I'm under insert into, now control T does work and it does run the equivalent of test file for that, for that package, right? So I can just clear all this stuff, control T, and we can see that it's just uh, running the tests for insert into that R. Um, another one that we made was control R. And so that one actually, what it does is, um, oh, so that's actually in the next set of slides, sorry. Um, all right. So uh, <clears throat> control R, that's for test coverage. And test coverage is this concept of, um, has this line of code that you wrote in your function, is it actually being used in any of your tests, right? And so the way you can do this is like, you can use DevTools test coverage file for a specific file, DevTools test underscore coverage for the full um, package. Um, and you can even set up like, uh, if you're using Git and stuff, uh, you can then use use this um, use underscore coverage to, to, um, uh, to automatically report the coverage uh, status of your of your script of your uh, package, and so <clears throat> one way of doing this is that uh, uh, you can guide like if you still need to make more tests for your code by checking the coverage with like uh, command control R if you modify the keyboard shortcuts for it, and so that would open that opens a little um, file that like we can. Um, a little uh, uh, HTML that looks like this. And so it shows um, in green the lines that have been used, so that, we, that have been actually executed um, in, um, in your tests. Um, and then it shows here a number for them. So it shows, for example, that if this if has been executed three times in my tests. Uh, the C bind is only has only been executed once because I only have one test that where the if where where the if where equals true condition is actually true. Um, uh, then I have two tests that check this. Both of them like say like I don't know that's not the case, and so both of them then go on to the next set of lines, um, um, uh, and so uh, here it says like okay out of the lines of code that we have. 83% um, of them have been covered by tests. There's one condition here that I haven't tested, which is the C line X uh, comma Y scenario, which is like inserting it in the, at the very end. So I don't have a test for that on my unit tests right now. Um, 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 and so, uh, uh, like if you use this uh, coverage approach, you can basically like modify the code and just check your uh, uh, your check coverage and see if you're missing anything. Um, and that way you can add more things, right? So let, um, um, uh, let's, you know, we noticed that we don't have a test for the, uh, uh, for the X comma Y um, C bind which is when we are appending to the end of it. So 
let's um, let's make a little test for it. So um, this is where where has to be greater than the last column, right? Which is uh, would be the where is equal four. So let me add. Let me copy paste this code over here for our test. And so I'll use where is equal four now. And so in that scenario, I should have, um, I should add X and Y to the very end of it. And I should have the very, the, the three columns for DF1 first. So that will be A, B, and then C. Um, so now that I've done that, like Control R, uh, we'll uh, make again the coverage, and now we see that we have a hundred percent coverage. And so actually, this if is now being tested four times because I have a, a total of four tests, and this little C line over here that wasn't being tested now is actually being tested. Um, and so. Why you want to do this, right? The idea is that, like, uh, for users, if they if they know what this is about, they can get a bit of confidence on how good this package will be, right? And so, I'll show you two very drastic examples <laughs> of packages that I'm working on. Um, so, like, uh, uh, um. Recount tree, for example, has zero tests right now. I haven't made a single test for it. Um, but like uh, Megadev, which is uh, we started working on more recently, has a code coverage of 78%. Um, um, and so like this gives the user an idea that like, um, you know, Actually, some of these R scripts are have a hundred percent test coverage. Some of them are not. So, like uh, one of them, for example, let's look at install.r here. It's going to show me the code, and then it's going to be like, oh, actually, um, you know, this particular scenario here has never happened in any of your tests, um, um, and things like that. Uh, so sometimes it's not possible to get to 100%, um, right? In this part, for example, this is one of those examples where like this function has this behavior that is um, uh, dependent on the operating system. So if it's Windows or if it's Mac, we'll do something different. And I'm running my test on Linux. So that's why it's not, it won't run, um, it won't report the coverage there, right, at 100%. But um, you can do a lot better than what I'm doing on the recon tree package, um, and you can have more tests. Um, some people view this as a game, right? As a way of like, okay, let's make sure that, uh, that I have as many tests as possible. Um, some other advantages uh, is that like, um, you have tests, then, um, then you have a better interface because, um, You've made sure that like uh, your package, you know, works properly, things like that, um, and you've had them. It kind of helps you make things smaller and modular, right? So you instead of having a very big function, you might uh, prompt you to have a smaller functions that you can then test the specific parts of that smaller function, um, uh, um, and uh, like this could lead to improve improvements in readability and performance without like um, actually changing the output of what you're generating. Um, uh, and like, if you were like a professional, like package developer type of thing, right? Um, which I mean, uh, all of you might want to be, um, this, this idea that like, uh, if you're working, uh, if your job is like making our packages, right? Like you could end the day with like, even a test failing, and it's like, okay, next day, that's you know, that's that will be the task that I'll that I'll um, try to solve the next day, right? That will be the the, the test that I need to implement. Um, so having said that, let's like play around a bit more with this IAT call. Um, and so, 
this approach, uh, they've called it the TDD or test driven development um, of um, uh, modifying your code and running, running automated tests with like uh, control T, for example, if you set the keyboard shortcut or um, dev tools test underscore file. Um, so let's, let's try this out. So we want in our little package, we have our insert into function. Let's now let, let's add now the function add underscore column or call. Um, and so just to get you started, right? Um, let's say we have a little, um, a small data frame that has just a column called X with a value of one. And we want to add to that data frame the column Y at two, uh, sorry, the column Y with a value two and then where where is equal either one or two. And then we might also want to add the uh, the variable X and say that we want to call that two, right? Um, so these are going to be some of the, the different scenarios that our function might need to work with, right? And so, um, <clears throat> Because we're, we're going to practice a test-driven development approach, um, we, we want to have expectations. And so the, the expectation that is used the most frequently is, is expect equal, where we have the object we just generated, and then on the right side, we have, um, after the comma, we have what was expected output, right? So like an example could be like our function x and y should return one, for example. Um, but there's other expectations that we could do. Um, for example, like we can, like let's say that uh, um, our function generates the output and we call it out, right? So maybe we want to um, <clears throat> check if um, uh, the shape of that object is, is the shape okay, like without actually testing the specific values. So we might check where is like, for example, let's say we expect that the list and we expected it to have three elements. Um, and then um, for some specific computations, we might want to uh, test like very specific values of our output. So let's say the first element of our output table, maybe it's 10, the second element maybe it's a little data frame that has X equals one, right, et cetera. Um, um, uh, and like, you can get into like using very specific types of, uh, of uh, expectations, right? So uh, like instead of typing expect equal is list is equal to true, we can just say like, we can either say like expect true for the is that list, or if we already know what the type is, we can use expect underscore type and then say list, right? So all three forms are equivalent it's just that this third one is short is shorter to type than this first one, right? And so this is where like uh, um, uh, you know the people at our studio they're making so many packages and typing so much, right? That they just want to make it as quick and possible. But like uh, like out you know any of these three options that you use, I'll be happy with, because um, um, having a test is better than not having a test. Um, um, cool. Um, um, like another one, for example, is, is like this length expect equals length. You can then use the function expect underscore length. And I just mentioned that apropos is one way of finding all the expectations. But for now, like let's just start with expect equal. And as we as we get better at using uh, test that, we might you know use more other specific tests. Um, so the idea here is. Uh, we're gonna start our, our function at underscore column. Um, um, sorry, a test, not the function. We're gonna add a test at underscore column using use underscore test. And into it, we're gonna paste this set of tests that they gave us. Um, and the idea is to make them pass. Um, and so a hint on how to you know get started is like, once you have the test, then create the function, use underscore R. Um, I mean, use the function, use underscore R to create the function add underscore column. And like here we have a little like, you know, the skeleton of it is gonna have the arguments 
x name value and where, and we want to add things to it. And every time we add something to it, then we can uh, check if our if our test is working correctly by using control or command plus R. Um, and so uh, let me do this myself. So let me uh, run use test um, add underscore call to add the test file. Um, and then into it, I'll paste uh, the test that they gave us. Um, uh, and then um, save that. And then I'll uh, create the script, or sorry, the, the function file uh, for add underscore column. I'll paste it. And if I just use, um, uh, if I just, if I press like control T on my computer, uh, it will run those tests and it says like, okay, we have a failure. We have two failures for our test, right? And so the goal is to go from these two uh, failed tests to two okay tests. And so we want to, uh, you know, um, start writing the function of add underscore call. Um, so um, there's a couple more hints, right? Uh, in our add underscore call function, we want to actually use the insert into function that we made earlier. Um, and because one of our tests, if you look at it closely, we have our data frame that has the column X. Um, but then in one of our tests, we're adding, um, mm, oh, I guess I, we didn't have the test there. Uh, one of the scenarios that we might do later in the future is add underscore column BF. We might actually then want to um, specify a column name that already exists in our data frame. Um, so that is where like the set names function might come to play. So with that, let me pause the recording and let you guys you know, try it out. So um, I'll try to do slide 46 again here, uh, which is like we have this test um, uh, uh, that we want to make pass, uh, what well, we want to have it pass, right? Um, where we have a small data frame with a column X, and we want to add to it. Uh, uh, um, oh, sorry. Am I too far ahead? Yeah, I'm too far ahead. I didn't even get to slide 46, sorry. Um, I was talking before, I was just making that call work. Um, so the hints were to use insert into and to use set names. So uh, one thing, because I mean, because of the hints, I actually wasn't familiar with set names until I first and uh, did this um, workshop um, last year. Um, and so we can see that, okay, you can give it an object and you can give it a vector of names um, and it will assign them. So in order, the other thing was to use insert into, right? And so if you remember insert into takes two data frames as input, an X and a Y data frame, and then a where argument. So where is easy, right? I know that when I have to use insert into, X, Y, and then where. Where, like I know, if, like uh, that's my argument where from add call. X is also easy because that's also my input, All right? So I need to create Y. And so let me, let me create my new, uh, 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 like my Y data frame, right? Um, so I want to cre create a data frame. I mean, it's going to have the value, right, that I specify to it. And because we want to have a name for it, um, let me add, um, you know, uh, sorry, 
let me just showcase this by saying like, why is it going to be Y data frame? Um, so I haven't actually set names yet. If I do this, I can press Control T to run the tests for my uh, specific function. Um, and so uh, it's still failing for me. Um, and what is failing because it says the names are not matching, right? Um, like um, they're fairly similar, but the names are not matching. Um, and so that's when we can use them, the set names function to set the names of my object. And um, I'll use my name argument. So if I do that, control T, uh, and now all my tests run, right? Um, um, are there any questions about this solution so far? Okay. So um, their solution is basically that. They just have a different set of argument names. Um, um, and they're not like specifying the X argument you know, insert into or the Y argument. Um, they're using positions to match things. Um, um, okay. So <clears throat> let's add another test to, uh, to add call. Um, Mm -hmm. Control copy and call. Um, so actually, let me show you another, keep, uh, another interesting shortcut. Um, if you press Control dot, so Control period, um, it uh, R Studio opens a little um, uh, panel here that says Go to File or Function, and I, I know that I'm you know, working on the add underscore call. And so it actually shows me three different uh, options. It shows me a little, uh, little like squiggly F, which is short for function, an add.r file, and a test dash add. Um, an add underscore call dot r file, and a test dash add underscore call dot r file. So I know that I want the third one um, because that's you know our test file. Um, so that way it will like navigate to it and open it automatically. Um, once I'm there, Control V, save my test. Um, then let's go back to my function. So Control dot, um, scroll call. I'll go to whichever the function or the R file for it. Uh, it's back over here. Um, I'll press Control T to run the tests, and I get an error. And here saying like um, we're having an X. Um, uh, and the problem is uh, I'm overwriting the X, and so that's the thing I need to solve. Um, so here we need to make some decisions, some design decisions, right? Like I could say like uh, uh, that if uh, if the name already exists, I could be like if name is in the uh, call names of X then like throw an error, right? Um, uh, uh, so I control this error, right? Um, and so if I run the test, um, I see uh, the error message name already exists in X, um, and so like my test is failing because um, because I have that error, right? That I added myself, um, but like um, because of the way they designed the test, they're telling us that expected solution here should be X is equal to two, so that means that um, when we add to a data frame um, a name that is already present we will overwrite that value. Um, so instead of doing this solution, 
which I'll comment now with uh, control C C. Let me do the, the more complicated solution. So, um, so I need to still detect if the name was already present with the um, um, if name is already present, then um, x name will be value. And at that point, we can return uh, x. So let's try that, control T. And now everything works out. Right? Um, um, I could also uh, do it a different way. I could like, if that's the case, I change x and then let's uh, set um, y the f. Let's see if this works. If I set it to null, uh, no, that doesn't work for data frame. An empty data frame. Nope. Um, Um, so that didn't work. I'll go back in time. My solution that did work here, return x, control T, it all works again. Uh, something on the chat. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta head out, but I'll catch the end of this on the. Oh, end. sure. No worries. Bye. See you, Louis. Um, um, so, uh, these are different. Oh, there's actually the same solution, or very similar solution. Uh, instead of using return x, they just use an if else, um, a nested if else. And so remember, the last thing that's evaluated is that's the thing that's returned. So that's why they're evaluating x here, or in, or insert into here uh, on the else condition. Um, both of them work really. Um, cool. And so the last test is uh, about adding uh, the default where the or where where is on the far right instead of the um, of having to specify it. And so uh, let's again use control period to navigate to the add call test file. I'll add a test that we were given there. Um, then navigate back to the script file, if I run the test with control T, uh, it's like, oh, you have an error. And actually now test that is giving me messages. Like, oh, I believe you, you can do it. It's giving me encryption messages. Um, and so, um, um, uh, uh, we need to, we haven't specified here a where value for add column. And so, uh, we can actually use in the function this definition the other arguments. So if we want to make it the far right, we can just use that number of columns of x and then add a number to it. Um, so let's try that. Control T, and now all the tests work. Right. Um, cool. So that was. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's what they did also here. They added where is equal to the number of columns x plus one. Um, um, and, um, you know, our function works for now. Uh, but like, you know, maybe the user has you know, some weird situations, right? Maybe, um, um, maybe they specify a where equals zero or a where like not a number or they give it a vector, or instead of it being numeric, they give a character, right? Um, and so you can try to make tests for that, right? Uh, like, uh, let me just run this code, for example. Um, you might want to try to detect those uh, scenarios uh, and try to provide in a specific um, uh, 
um, um, the specific like error messages or stuff like that. So like um, um, this error message might be informative enough for for you users, but it says like where is equal to one, and like um, uh, we have a missing value where a true or false is needed, right? And so people can then look at their function call and be like, oh, actually, yes, I'm specifying an NA. That's probably the cause of the problem. Um, but you could also, you know, pro make conditions, if conditions, and provide like um, more specific error messages. Um, but that, you know, depends how much you want to, how user-friendly you want to make your code type of thing. Um, um, and um, if you, you can make a, a function that like checks each of the input, input inputs, like one for checking the where argument and say like, okay, it has to have these properties, et cetera. As you have more and more arguments in your functions, like checking will become like, really like hard for all the arguments you have. Um, um, although ideally some of them are common across the different objects that you're using. Um, so this is part of where users get frustrated sometimes, right? Because they might get error messages that are like really hard to comprehend. Um, and that's because um, uh, something is happening that was not expected by the person that made the function. And so uh, the error message here is giving us information of uh, inside the code, right? So this if where equals one part is what's part of line 18 of my insert into, right? So this section over here, that's what R is detecting as a, a part of code that failed and it's printing it to the user, but like that part of code, that piece of code might not be um, understandable by them, right? Um, uh, unless they look at the source code. Um, um, cool. So um, um, we went over the test driven development. Um, and so um, at this point, we're like together with the documentation and stuff, we can start making our packages. There's a lot more stuff on the building tiny tool that we didn't get to, right? This, this was a workshop that we couldn't just go over it fast because there's a lot of things to learn um and so we'll you know um now that we have the basics it's all about practicing right and so we'll we'll have a lot more opportunities to practice and start building our packages um so let me stop the recording